بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Um, so in today's uh, reminder, I'm not going to go through uh, any of the ayat that were recited, um, but I want to touch on um, another topic altogether, and that is the topic of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Uh, many of you will know that uh, a message was sent out a few days ago that the masjid will be organizing a trip to Masjid Al-Aqsa um, at the end of May, inshallah, in May half term. Uh, and I just want to mention a few things um, before, of course, registration goes live tomorrow. Um, first and foremost, Masjid Al-Aqsa, as we all know, my dear brothers and sisters, is one of the three holy sites. It's that land that the Prophet ﷺ told us to go and visit. Yes, we know from the hadith of Abu Dhar, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, which masjid was the first masjid established? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Masjid al-Haram. Yes, the Haram in Mecca. And then the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what came next, what came after that? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Masjid al-Aqsa. And then Abu Dhar said, what was the time period between the two? The Prophet ﷺ, he said 40 years. 40 years after Masjid al-Haram, there was a, a place of worship established there. Did a Masjid al-Aqsa come about? A Masjid al-Aqsa was established as a place of worship. So it's our second Masjid. It's the first Qibla. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was praying in Mecca, he would pray towards where? He would pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa. And this lasted until the Prophet ﷺ migrated. And when he was in Medina, he would pray towards Masjid al-Aqsa. And that lasted for 16 or 17 months, praying towards Masjid al-Aqsa. Ibn Abbas عنهما, he said about this land, and this is of course the land of the Anbiya, it's the land of the Prophets. Yes, if you think about from the Prophet Adam السلام, and the scholars differ in terms of who was the one that built Masjid al-Aqsa first and Masjid al-Haram first. But if you look, think about all of these major Prophets, from Ibrahim السلام, to Ya'qub السلام, yes, to all of them, subhanAllah, they all had some type of relationship with Masjid al-Aqsa. Isa السلام, Prophet Dawood, Prophet Suleiman, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa, and he, all of them had a relationship with this land. And this is the land when the Prophet ﷺ was taken on the night journey. He was taken from where? Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And then the Prophet ﷺ was taken through the heavens. And the scholars say, why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have taken him directly from Masjid al-Haram to the heavens. But it's to show you and I the importance of this land. You and I the importance of Masjid al-Aqsa. Ibn Abbas anhuma, he said about this land that there's not an inch of this land except that a prophet has either prayed there or an angel has stood there. This is Masjid al-Aqsa, my dear brothers and sisters. And Masjid al-Aqsa today has become neglected. It's the neglected land. It's the neglected of the three holy sites. And we as Muslims must revive um, our presence in Masjid al-Aqsa. This is something that's a duty upon us, my dear brothers and sisters. And I was in Masjid al-Aqsa at the end of January, early February, with a group of uh, 11 brothers. And the reason we went was we saw a video of a brother uh, who was mid-January, he was in Masjid al-Aqsa and he said, I'm the only person from the West here. And there's nobody praying inside, there's one saf. And this is the third holy site and where are the Muslims? I got in contact with that brother. That brother told me, yes, I'm actually here. There's no issues, people should come. So we went, a group of 11 of us. When we arrived in Masjid al-Aqsa, there was nobody to be seen. There was literally four brothers who had also made their way from Bradford, and there was a family from South Africa. You think about this, maybe 20. 20 brothers from the West were in the third holiest site. Think about the Muslim Ummah of millions upon millions from the West. Only 20. And when you spoke to the locals there, and you said, ask them, what is it that they need? All of them said the same thing. We need people to start coming back to this masjid. Why? Because the Palestinians, are, it's very difficult for them to just go and pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa. There's many checks, they get refused entry, etc. But us from the UK, we prayed every single salah in Masjid Al-Aqsa. No, no issues at all. And since then, many groups have gone in February. Yes, many groups are there now. There's a group of over 100 going, only for the last 10 nights of Ramadan. 
So people are going, and even from this masjid, there are families that I said they wanted to go, and we've shown, we've put them in touch with people there, and they're going. So the way is there. To get there is not difficult, in all honesty, but it requires that determination and that drive from ourselves. I spoke to the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa, Sheikh Yusuf, and I asked him, what's his message to the people of the West? He said, we need two things from you. Dua'ukum wa hudurukum. We need your du'as and we need your presence. We need your presence here. Yes, when you come, it fills the masjid. There are people praying in the masjid. When you're not here, it's like the masjid is empty. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the reason why we've put this trip together. When we came back, we said we need to organize a trip. And our trip is, inshallah, at the end of May. Uh, this is not a pitch, by the way, for the, the trip. The trip sells out every time, yani within half an hour. The point of, of this reminder is for us to understand the importance of this land and to make an intention to go and visit. It might be with a different group. You might not be able to go in May. You might want to go later on. No problem. We can help you. We can uh, introduce you to different groups. All of that stuff. The point is, is that we must have that intention, that desire to go and visit this land. Now there are two common points that have been raised with regards to the trip. Number one is, is it safe to go? Is it safe to go? This is the first question that's often posed. Is it safe to go? And I'll tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, it's safe. Speaking to everybody who is there now, and everybody who's been, and us ourselves, we found that there's no issue. And alhamdulillah, uh, with, with your British passport, even the guards who stop you, they just say, where are you from? You say, UK, and you walk in. I'm taking my own family. If there was an issue of safety, I wouldn't be taking my own children. Yes, but I believe it's safe for us to go. Even the support team are taking their families. So this issue of safety is, is something that we shouldn't worry about. Sometimes we think what's happening in Gaza is happening in the old city of Jerusalem. It's not. They're two different places. So to go to the old city, it's relatively safe. There's no issues. ta'ala. The second question that's posed is, why are you going from Luton? Yes, it's a, an, a, you know, a drive. It's another four hours. You'll be going to get tired. At one point, I want to mention, honestly, my dear brothers and sisters, you know when I hear this, that we're going to get tired and it's an extra four hours and well, subhanallah what's happened to to this ummah that we're complaining about having to sit in a coach for four hours this is how yani, ajib we've become there's no direct flights easy jet aren't going from manchester to tel aviv at the moment so we got the one from newton it's an extra four hours yes you're gonna have to sit on a coach you're gonna get a little bit tired you're going to the third holy site you're going to masjid al-aqsa the prophet said go there sulaiman made a dua that anybody who comes to this masjid with the intention to pray two rakah that he does not leave except that he leaves like the day his mother gave birth to him. Two rakah for the one who has the intention to go and pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa. This is the reward. So to put yani, a little bit of hardship, a little bit of difficulty is nothing. Well, it's nothing, my dear brothers and sisters, to sit on a coach for four hours and, and whatnot. So we have to yani, get out of this mentality that we want everything super easy. The people of the past would travel on camel, would travel by foot and in weeks just to go and pray two rakah in this masjid. And for us, it's, it's easy. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, it's easy. My final message is make an intention tonight that at some point you're going to go. At some point you're going to go and visit. Yes? And at some point you're going to stand with our Palestinian brothers and sisters. This is what they want. This is what strengthens them. When they see the hundreds coming from the UK and South Africa and Europe, Wallahi, it strengthens them. They say this is the most beautiful sight for us is to see you here. So make that intention. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives freedom to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives freedom to Masjid al-Aqsa wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.